Hello world, Christopher here with Two Flame Tango and today we're going to talk about the keystones. The keystones are the essence of the connection both with the floor and with your partner. One of the main ideas behind the Alexander Technique is that there is a hierarchy of importance when it comes to the structural support of the body. And this is what I mean by that. If you could turn and face the wall here. So we think that the, where the head becomes the neck and the spine is of supreme importance. And as uh, this line goes down, it comes out the limbs, out the legs and out the arms. There's a line this way that has two points crossing it. And where these two points cross is what I call the keystone. And uh, this idea was brought to the Alexander Technique by Raymond Dart when he explained what Alexander was talking about from an evolutionary development standpoint uh, and developmental movements. So back in the day when we were a four-legged animal, we would walk around like this and we would have support on the floor with our arms and our legs and those would keep our back up. And what happens when an animal gets sick is they start to collapse and they start to fall down in the middle and ah, uh, you know if I turn this way you can see it. A vigorous lively animal is up and interested and a sick one is like ah. Uh, barely holding on. So the idea behind the problem with the keystones is that they can collapse. And this happens in tango universally, really, because we lift our arms to take an embrace with somebody, and just in the act of lifting our arms, we tend to bring our shoulders back and stick our, our chest forward. And, and lose this critical place here, comes forward a little bit. Uh, you want to help me out again, Sophie? Uh, this is exacerbated when people tell you to connect with your chest. And people go to take an embrace, especially in close embrace, and they stick their chest forward, and immediately their elbows go out and up, and they try and have this kind of dance. And it hurts. And it gives you no real connection to their ancestral structural support. When, if you're thinking about it, you can even have a very close embrace. And I'm looking for Sophie's support all the way from here through her arms into my connection. So that when I move her, she doesn't collapse into it but she's able to support herself. It's as though she were here on all fours and she's ready to rear and, and connect. She's not stepping back like this. Okay, so let's look at John's drawing that uh, is really an extraordinary drawing. So he has um, two images here with the yes and the no. And what the image with the no, he's talking about X's. And this way of dividing up the body breaks it into an arm, a leg, a torso, a neck, uh, eyes and ears. And it breaks it into individual pieces. Where on the right here, he's proposing this understanding of the division of the body. And this one looks more like structural support beams that run through a house. So the one in the middle dividing it into a left and a right is the main center beam like of the roof of the house and then all of those lines that come out of there to the fingertips are the uh, lines running down to the ground. And this is what he calls the X's and the pluses. So at, at these major keystones here there's one where the, the cervical vertebrae become the thoracic vertebrae, right at the seventh cervical there. And there's another one down here uh, where the, the lumbar becomes the sacral junction. 
uh, that, that runs through the legs. And so you can imagine this keystone first by imagining that point to be the center of an X on your body and just kind of see how that X feels and how it makes your body organize itself. And John's exercise is to feel that X and then feel it getting smaller and collecting into one little point in the center. And then from there to start growing as a plus, as a cross. And what that does is it builds up that keystone and the connection flows side to side and up and down away from that point and it makes it very supported and strong that that plus flows all the way from the the keystone here and divides the arm into an upper and lower half and ends in the uh, <laughs> John's amazing. He's like, don't cut yourself all the way open to the middle finger. Only do it about to the palm. Leave all of this connected and feel the division running to about there. And so if you can feel that line of support, uh, one way he suggests feeling it is imagine if you had uh, like an inlaid piece of metal, a little metal rod that was you know, half in your skin and half outside of it. And it's just placed on top of you here and it gives you that support. And so like if you're hiking and you have a big backpack, that's where you have your greatest strength is right where those meet. Like that's your strongest point. And then just to uh, experience something radically different, imagine instead of a metal bar, that there's space, that this line kind of cracks open and leaves a crevasse in there. And there's actually, instead of a metal bar, there's nothingness, there's spaciousness. And it, <laughs> uh, you just have to try out the imagery, imagery and spend a minute, a minute with it. Like think it through and then think it through in your arm and think it through all the way into your wrist. And see if you can feel that line, that little crevasse, that little ravine that runs through there. And it gives you a sense of, of wonderful freedom in this point. And, uh, you know, again, when, when I'm dancing with people, I ask them to connect with me there. It's like our embrace is two sides of a circle. And if either one of those circles collapses in, the arms tend to stick out and we turn into a this number and my hand gets intense and I'm falling into Sophie and pushing her around. Whereas if I have my keystone as the furthest back thing and I move from my keystone and connect it through my arms, we have this unbreakable connection and this just extremely supported two extremely supported systems. There's another keystone in the hips that dictates our connection with the ground and it's just as easy to collapse and lose the support from. People pick up a foot and completely lose this support. That's a whole nother story with a whole nother set of exercises which we will get to. But this one, just be on the lookout for. When you go and offer an embrace to somebody, Make sure that you're not picking your hands up and coming and sticking your chest into them, but rather keep your distance, find your back, connect your back through your arms, and then go about your business. It happens in open embrace and it happens in close embrace. We find our support and then we launch. I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below, like and subscribe. Uh, we love you all and we'll see you soon. <laughs>